Hey everyone, welcome into another episode of Investing in Real Estate. This is the show where we stay laser focused on buy and hold investing for creating passive income. And today we've got a great episode because, well, Natalie Morris is back on the phone, back on the line. Hey. Hi. How oh, are I you? make it great every time I'm here. You are, you do make it great. Oh, thank make you. Make it a great day. How are I you? I tend to. I'm great, thank you. Great, of course, obviously. So what are we going to talk about today on the big show? Well, recently I gave Clayton my very old copy of The Alchemist, which is, I think, is one of my favorite books, a very inspiring book. And he felt like he was able to relate it to our real estate business. And he said, we should do a podcast about this. So I'm always willing to talk about The Alchemist. Um, that's the book by the uh, South American writer, Paulo Coelho. And um, hopefully you've read it. If you haven't, take a day or two. It's a very short read um, and read it either before before or after this podcast is fine. Um, but I want to, we, what we want to do is talk about sort of some of the inspiration that we found from this book. Right. And related to real estate investing, because there are so many parallels as you start this journey. I mean, the story, The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho is one of the best selling books in history, right? And it's not even that old. Um, talk to people. They've, so many people have read The Alchemist. You, you bring it up. They're like, Oh, I read that. I got to read that again. And it's one of those books that you could read every year and pull something new from it. Um, maybe you're in your twenties and you're, you're reading that book for the first time, which I think is when you read it, but it had a totally different meaning for you, uh, in your thirties. Um, it's the story of uh, Santa uh, Santiago, right? Santiago, uh, yeah. Yeah, Santiago, the shepherd boy who's on this journey to realize his personal legend. What is his goal in life? And uh, really is an inspirational book for people to live out their dreams, to create uh, that space and that freedom in your life. And so um, you read it in your 20s. And you know what, what stood out to you in your 30s that was different for you? So much. I think I've been on this quest to find my personal legend for a long time now. I just, you know, sometimes I watch people in their careers and I feel like the people who know 110% why they're here and how they can serve and how they can succeed, you really envy those people, like someone who's a singer or someone who is, I don't know, you know, an Olympian or, or whatever, that they can put all of their focus into that one thing and they know that that's how they serve in this world. World. And The Alchemist is about one person's journey to find his personal legend and read the signs from the universe that help him get to where he's supposed to be. And the really the crux of the lesson here is that if you are following the signs of the universe and acting with sincerity and being brave, then the universe will conspire to help you succeed in life with not only beautiful adventures and relationships, but also monetary rewards. Like this is about someone who goes on in search of an actual treasure that's worth value. Right. And I think one of the broader top things that stood out to me after reading this was thinking about, I, and of course, we we just given birth to our little baby girl and and this year has just been remarkable for us. And I think it started really at the end of last year when I said, uh, you know, when you see abundance around you and when you, when you, when you see abundance in every way and you're not greedy and you don't try to cheat people and you try to help and float all boats, so to speak, then uh, abundance just continues to flow in, in, in dramatic and amazing ways. It's when you want to hold on to money and hoard money and not donate and not give to charity and not help other people and have a fear of money and all of those things. When you, you really create these limiting beliefs and then you really, I think you align yourself with that negative energy in a way where, you know, great real estate deals don't come to you and passive income does not come to you and more obstacles start appearing in your way because you don't see abundance. You don't think in those ways. Right. And maybe people don't know this about us, but Clayton and I, when we run our business, we really try to think through each decision spiritually. Like how does that affect other people and how can we then help other people? We, we really want to make every single decision in a way that either aligns our energy with our highest and best purpose. And we feel like real estate investing is something that we're good at, but we want to take ego out of it. And, you know, that's one of the big lessons is that the protagonist doesn't have a big ego. He's willing to learn in every 
challenge that's presented to him. He's like, well, okay, you know, I know this from my previous lesson when I was a shepherd or when I worked in this crystal shop. So, you know, I learned that. What can I learn next? Um, And so I think that's what makes us a really good partnership is that we can sort of make these decisions together and we believe the same thing about, again, trying to find our highest and best purpose, um, trying to learn each lesson that's presented in front of us. And we've had some challenges. This week has been particularly challenging, um, you know, with with certain decisions we've had to make. And we always can say, okay, you know, where do we want to put our energy here and how do we think it serves us? Right. And for me, for Morris Invest and our company and, our, you know, our turnkey company and what we do with our investors and what we do with our own personal portfolio, you know, is is our energy aligned in such a way where we're helping those people we're you know shutting out any sort of negativity but really doing the best possible job that we can do for people um whether it's tenants living in a property whether it's contractors literally right before this con um podcast you were paying contractors <laughs> you were like hey we'll get we're going to start the podcast but I want to get these paychecks out I want to get these uh you know these checks out to people because you know, that's important, right? That's very important to take care of people and to see abundance and make sure that everyone is in that alignment. And that's one of the big takeaways from the book, which is always take action. Um, Right. You know, he says there's only really there's only one way to learn and it's through action. And, you know, Santiago in the book, he pops and stops at these different villages and he sees people who have sort of just stayed there for 40 years, right? Or 50 years. And they've, they, they've wanted to go out and explore, but they just, they just kind of stayed and they never took action. Maybe they, I, I like to think of it in real estate terms, right? They just hang out in internet forums and they just read, they talk themselves out of ever taking action. Because if you want to search the internet, you're always going to find an excuse to not do something, right? Like, oh, maybe I want to go paragliding with my friends when we're in Colorado this 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 summer, right? Well, then you start Googling, you start spending like a lot of time on the internet, like talking yourself out of paragliding, right? Because of one person in Idaho that had an accident because he didn't properly hook up his carabiner to his chest or something like that, right? You're always going to find an excuse if you look for it hard enough. And I think that was one of the big lessons for me in this book is that these people that Santiago runs across have made excuses, uh, for not going out and exploring and looking for their personal legend. And he says that one of his big lessons is being able to read his surroundings. And he says, one of, and what I think one of the things that if, remember we watched that documentary on following your heart. Right. Do you remember what it was called? I think it was just called heart. It was the follow up to the movie, the secret. Uh, okay. I, it was I know by we the watched same it producers. within the last two years. I'll look it up while you're explaining here. Let me let me look it up okay. while you explain. We'll, we'll tolerate your typing while you look that up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think, you know, Paulo Coelho is featured in that. And he, one of his lessons is that your heart is going to lead you in specific directions. And your responsibility as a human in this incarnation of your life is to follow those instincts and take action on those things because the heart knows something. But the heart is sort of in cahoots with the universe to show you your way. And so you have to constantly be reading the signs externally and internally. Right. It's called The Power of the Heart. It's a good documentary. It's the follow-up. It's by the producers and the director of The Secret. Um, and if it's in alignment with goodness, I think that's another key takeaway is that, you know, if, if it's, if your journey is in alignment with helping and, and in improving the overall collective consciousness, I know this gets a little esoteric for people, but I like to think of it that way. I had someone recently say to me, you know, thank you for what you're, you're doing with your company because You've basically rebuilt an entire street, houses that had were completely abandoned, vacant, fallen into disrepair. Like I can count on my – go down that street. Almost every house on that street we've revitalized, right? We've you, You're helping a community. You're helping um, – you're helping tenants, you're helping contractors. If you're, if it's in alignment with helping everyone, then you know you're on a good journey. But if it's about ego, if it's about greed, then that's not in alignment. And, and if this – 
is seeming a little spiritual for people who are like, oh my gosh, business is business. Um, I'm going to really highly suggest the book Conscious Capitalism by, uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but Clayton won't let me type while we're podcasting because otherwise it sounds like this. Yeah. Listen to how loud she types. She, it's like a herd of like buffalo it. coming through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, I'll look it up while I'm talking to you. But Conscious Capitalism is written by the owner of Whole Foods. John Mackey. Thank you. Yeah. And um, he talks about the very specific business models that show when you make business decisions in light of the collective good, you always make better profits. It's pretty remarkable, too. I mean, it really is. Um, you think, oh, this is going to cost me more. This is going to you know, be more money out of my pocket. And it's never the case. It really is not. Um, so that's a, that's a key takeaway, right? Always taking action. Um, another thing that I like to talk about is fear. You know, fear in the book, fear is a bigger obstacle than the obstacle itself, right? It's the FDR quote, right? You know, mm -hmm. the, nothing to fear but fear itself. Um, and one of the things that he says in the book, right, tell your heart that the fear of suffering is worse than the suffering itself and that no heart has ever suffered when it goes in search of its dreams because every second of that search is a second in, a second's encounter with God and with eternity. Now, that's very spiritual, but it is true that fear holds us back from ever doing anything. I mean, this is really what either you're motivated out of love or you're motivated out of fear. Right. And I think we can share that when we first started buying rental real estate, of course we were afraid. I remember this. I have this memory very vividly is that Clayton and I had gone to the gym and we had our kids down in childcare and Clayton had bought... Um, his first two rental properties, at least since we had been married. Um, it was like our first family investment in Michigan. And it took a couple of weeks to have them rehabbed. We had a contractor that we had a really good relationship with. And I remember thinking, well, when will we make this investment back? Okay, well, we'll just see. And, you know, I know Clayton's talked about how that's the wrong way to think about your investments. And then he got an email from our property manager that said, both of them were rented here, your rental contracts. And you walked across the gym in tears um, and you were like, I did it. I did it. Like we, mm. we have some, do you remember this? I forgot about that. Yeah. Do you remember it though? Because I had gone, you know, I had gone, I do remember it now that you say that because I had gone through a foreclosure. I had had made some missteps, but you know, you realize that even in these missteps, it's a, you know, there's like Gandhi says, right. There's, there's nothing, there's no mistakes. There's only lessons. Um, and so, you know, it's like when you, when you fall down, um, you know, you fall down seven times, you get up eight times, right. That's in the book too. And so, yeah. uh, you know, having gone through all of those things, all of the crap that I went through before with that land deal that I, that fell apart with that, oh, you know, this, that, that Phil Mickelson golf course, um, land deal that I was involved in years ago before the crash happened. And like, you know, it's just like you learn from your, you learn from those things and then to have it all happen um, like that, it was just like overwhelming. Yeah. And I think I cried. <laughs> I guess yeah. I forgot about that. And I think I didn't realize how afraid you had been that that might not uh, pan out. You know, I thought you were sort of presenting to me a confident front. And when I saw how emotional you got about it, I was like, well, of course I'm proud of you. I, I, I didn't know you were this scared. So it's not that we don't have fear in our lives or things don't still scare us or rattle us. We constantly do. But we, again, refer to these lessons like, okay, what are we supposed to learn from this? How can we make decisions in the collective good? And, you know, how will that pay off in our lives? Right. And that house, for instance, just to give you a breakdown of that, the anatomy of that deal was like a $22,000 house that I bought, I think I put about $17,000 in rehab into it. So all in about what, 39, 39,000 roughly on that mm -hmm. one of those. Yeah. And there it, were two of them. Yeah. Two of them. But the, the, I, one of them, I remember the numbers specifically. And then, you know, that one rented for I think 800 a month or it was like nine something, but then, you know, you pay 10% to the property management team that we use. And it's, uh, it was like eight, eight something a month. And that one solidly rented. We had a five-year lease on that property mm -hmm. um, with a great tenant and a, and a really nice blue collar neighborhood. And so I always laugh when someone says, you can't make money on a forty or $50,000 house. It's like, hmm, that's fear talking. <laughs> you know, I have the experience. I know that this is what, you know, we were able to do and it still produces for our family today uh, at a very high level. So Anyway, fear is the biggest obstacle, and it's bigger than the obstacle itself. Um, another big takeaway from the book um, is that um, we need to uh, that your success has a ripple effect. 
Um, and that's what the alchemists do in the book, right? They show that when we strive to become better than we are, everything around us becomes better too, right? Growth, change, evolution, they're all weaved into this thing. And so when you become a better version of yourself, that actually creates a ripple effect around you, right? I made it a positive, I made a decision years ago that I wasn't going to get involved in gossip, right? And gossip can be around the water cooler, it can be on the internet, you know, you can hang out on Twitter and just have like all this negativity, or you can hang out in forums and there can be negativity. And it's like, it can be such bile, and so when I, I decided when I worked at my old show years ago called The Daily Buzz, like there was so much negativity. All they do would do is just gossip. And I, I started like meditating in the morning and I was like, I'm not going to be involved in this anymore. And I made a conscious decision not to be around it and I'd be a better person. And you know what? It had ripple effects. Like other people in the office started saying – I never said anything to them, but they just started acting that way. They started avoiding gossip. And it was weird because I never said anything about it. I never said that I'm going to start avoiding gossip. I just would, when they would start talking gossip, I'd walk away. But I saw it having a ripple, a ripple effect in the office and this like sort of positive environment was created. And it was kind of crazy to watch it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's just one small way that you can, you know, affect people around you. But you're right. You you have to insulate yourself from other people's negativity because you realize that that's coming from their fear. And especially lately, I just got through this pregnancy. I, you know, I want to be very careful about where I align my energies. Um, and I've been reading some books about, you know, quantum physics and, and string theory and how like the way the things you observe and the energy that you emit and take on and swim in really affects your everyday life and your everyday outcome. And I believe that 110%. So you have to be careful about how you choose to align your energy. And again, if you're making your business decisions, that sounded like I have a lisp, (laughs) business decisions around, you know, the collective good, like clearly people who listen to this podcast, they write us and they say, we want to have passive income for our family so that we have some freedom so that we can raise our our kids so that we can inspire, you know, our kids to be financially free. They have all of these great decisions, but I think, or or great motivations rather, but I think they don't realize how those decisions can affect the greater good. Like you said, you, you make a neighborhood better for a community. Mm -hmm. You make a house better for a family. You make work for contractors and you make work for your property managers. You, You lift up an entire city just by your small investment. No wonder the government wants to give us tax breaks for doing so because it's good for everyone. So, you know, you may feel like you're a small fish in a real estate pond, but really you make a difference. And if you can take that on, it, it, it can inspire you in ways that keep you going and it can inspire you in ways that make the universe know you are committed to this and the universe will continue to give you more opportunity to grow. And I'm going to link up our, our YouTube channel, the Morris Invest YouTube channel. I'm going to post some videos of some properties that we recently renovated um, for our investors. And you can see, I mean, you know, and you get this experience. I love looking at it, right? This, we had a duplex, uh, I think on Euclid for one of our investors. And, you know, I was there and looking at it and you walk through and it's just, it was a, in a disaster. And we had like five or six of our, our team members, their contractors running electrical, putting in new plumbing, doing the roof, doing all the new windows went in, um, you know, and all those things. And then you see the finished product, but this place was, you know, m- might've been like a, a place where people would hang out and, you know, <laughs> like n- do nefarious things at night, right? Like kids or, you know, like, you know, you remember growing up, I mean, my, me and my buddies, there was like an abandoned house down the street from us. And we would like, like go play in it. I mean, no joke. Like Jesse's house in um, in uh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. You know, it can become a bad. You know, and that, and so when you now that house is totally transformed and rented. I mean, it's so you know. Anyway, well, I'm going to link up our YouTube channel so people can see that. But um, another big takeaway in the book is make the decision. I love this because I mean, when when someone makes a decision. What he's doing is he or she is really diving into this strong current um, that's going to carry him to places that he's never really dreamed of when he first decided to make that decision. So you have a decision, you make it, and you're going to learn one way or the other. But what the act of making that decision and diving in is so powerful. I, I spoke to an investor yesterday. He lives in New York City. And uh, I was really impressed with him. He's, uh, I think he's 55. 
and he, uh, he had a bad investment years ago in New Jersey, um, and it kind of soured him to real estate investing. But then he started to you know listen to our podcast. He realized that you could invest not in your backyard, right? It was cost. It cost him like hundreds of thousands of dollars, like the property that he had owned. But he said, "I'm taking action." I'm going to take action. And I think he picked up uh, one or two properties um, and he's, he's taking action and he's so excited about it. And I was just so like proud of that because for other people will sit on their hands, but for him by the, he went through the, a bad experience years ago. He was trying to manage it himself. He, you know, uh, he had, and it was just like a series of things, right. That, that went wrong for him. And the fact that he dusted himself off and decided to take action and make a decision again um, really shows that he's like, throwing his energy into that current again. Um, and he's going to, you know, be able to reap the rewards of that, which is amazing. Yeah, it takes guts. I mean, you know, it's easy for me to say, um, but I don't, I don't know if I didn't have you, like how much action I would take. I know, I know you know, my, my, I think my forte is more sort of organization and, um, and maybe big picture type thinking, but, um, you know, we all need someone to inspire us to, to do that. So hopefully this podcast is, is something that will, um, inspire others and, and help others to inspire others. And it'll have a, have a ripple effect. Cause I, I feel like that's not something I can take credit for. Well, no, and you and I talked the other day about, we should do a podcast specifically devoted to how to work with your spouse in real estate investing. And we can dive in much more deeply into that. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, cause it's very easy to, um, to be caught up in, um, you're right, honey, you're a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the unknowns, right? And these like finer details. So you're like, okay, I want to invest in real estate. Well, there's a lot I don't know. And there's so many little details. Well, that should stop me from ever taking action. It's like, no, it shouldn't acknowledge that you don't know everything, but if you take action, you're going to find people will come into your life that are going to guide you in the right directions, right? Uh, it's very interesting when you start doing certain things. Um, it, I like to think of it like, hey, I want to buy a new car, right? And you're like, I want to buy this new Volvo. And then you start seeing Volvos like all over the place. Because when you like start to align yourself with buying that Volvo, now you start seeing Volvos everywhere. You know, it's kind of a crazy thing how that happens. And you're maybe you just haven't noticed it before, or you're just then you're going to find out your friends own a Volvo and they're starting to talk to you about it. And it's like just this stuff starts to show up in ways that you just don't anticipate until you take action. Right. Yeah, I, I had another thought about that, but it's escaped me while you're speaking. Well, I think one more um, point, and if there's any other points you want to take away from the book, I mean, we could go on and on, but I, I have one more point, which is um, focus on your own journey. Um, that I, I like that from the book, which is, you know, if someone, I have, I've struggled with this over the years, right? And it's very easy to have that sort of shiny object syndrome in anything you do in life. Um, uh, so if someone isn't what others want them to be, then the others in the book really become angry. Everyone seems to have a clear idea of how other people should leave their, lead their lives, but none about his or her own. So everyone wants to tell you why you're making a bad decision or why you're making, you know, everyone has an opinion. Everyone has an opinion. And the only opinion is the one that you hold of yourself and the ones that you are, you know, are true for you and your family. Um, you were mentioning something that, uh, that Oprah had said in a recent interview with uh, Brene Brown, the author of that great book, Rising Strong. And she said, how do you deal with the negativity? You know, there are people out there in internet forums or just wherever that just want to always trash talk you and all this sort of stuff. And what is, what did she say? She said, I don't read that. I'm not going to take that on. That yeah. was it. It was very simple. She's like, and you know nope, that, I don't have time for that. And you know, that's a woman <laughs> operating at like the highest level, right? Like she is, regardless of what you think of Oprah, right? Here's a woman who has her 10,000 hours of experience in dealing with negativity, right? And she's built a massive empire. So people want to say negative things about her. It's like Martha Stewart, right? People want to say negative things. Screw them. Who cares? Right. You know, everyone's got an opinion. Oh, you can't buy $40,000 houses. Oh, you can't invest out of state. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. Oh, you can't borrow from your 401k to buy real estate. Oh, you can't get a self-directed iron. I mean, there's so much, there's so many people that don't have their eyes on their own paper that want to mm -hmm. tell you how to live your life. Ignore them. Follow yeah. your own journey. Focus on what's important to you. Right. Otherwise, you're going to end up being miserable if you end up living someone else's life. 
Right. And one more thing that you and I had talked about was um, the Englishman, the character of the Englishman, which I hadn't realized. I, maybe I in hadn't the book, realized in the book, the, right. right in yeah, not just Englishman. Right in the in, in the alchemist, in the alchemist, right. <laughs> We're talking about a character. Um, th- this character that was was so committed to learning what he could from books that he couldn't read his own surroundings. Um, and you had said he is the perfect juxtaposition to you know then the more successful character, the protagonist of Santiago. Do you want to expand on that? Or did yeah, I? yeah. No, I mean, it's true because he was really the guy. You know, as he he kept. I think he had like a bag of stuff that he he thought he needed to be right. The Englishman. He he was trying to become the alchemist, right? He was trying to do what Santiago was doing, but he was doing it inauthentically. He was doing it because what other people were doing, right? Um, and it's easy to be influenced by other people, but and, but you're just going to be miserable if you just end up living someone else's life. I mean, and so. He had the sort of plan, but he was it was like it, it was like he was carrying it out for all the wrong reasons. And then when Santiago asks about this Englishman, um there there's I, I don't know if it's I, I didn't mark the exact quote, but um he's told, you know, some people get so obsessed this is a paraphrase uh, with words and images that they can't see their surroundings and i've thought about that since we both read it in the last couple of weeks i've that's the line that i've sort of been chewing on a lot because you know you can fart around on facebook and you can read books and you can really get really attached to what you see on some kind of digital screen right um something on netflix something like we're i think we're really distracting ourselves a lot of times with too much digital media mm-hmm. that that we're losing touch with what the physical signs are in in our world, um, and I do believe that you know you'll find little omens, little signs throughout your life. Um, if you haven't already, go back and listen to Clayton's Empower podcast. There's some great stories about that. Um, I am a hundred and ten percent believer that you can find actual signs to point you in the right direction, and I don't want to miss them because I'm looking at Instagram or something. So I've really been trying to like not just amuse myself for no reason with mm-hmm. digital media. And maybe that's I mean, clearly Paulo Coelho didn't have that lesson in mind when he wrote this book because it was long before the digital age. Well, it's early nineties, but um, yeah, it's easy to that, be. That's a lesson for me is that, you know, don't distract yourself with looking at what other people are doing or looking at other people's deals or looking at real estate forums. Those are words. Those are, those are not the lessons. The lessons are out there for you. You've got to like reach your arms and, you know, reach out for what the world has to offer. Yeah, that's a good way to that's a good way to wrap this up. So that's really the alchemist's gu- alchemist guide to real estate investing. I had a lot of takeaways for our own personal journey. Well, that's going to so glad to have done this podcast with you because I I gave Clayton the book and then he gave it back and was like that was great and I was like tell me tell me everything. Um, clearly, you had thoughts that you were saving for the podcast and not your wife. Exactly. <laughs> you don't pay attention to me in real life. You just pay attention I was to me. I'm asking for this. I know. I, I know. wanted this synthesis, but I'm I'm so glad we got it. But we just didn't do it in private. So go out and read The Alchemist. It's a fast read. You'll read it in just an afternoon, and it could change your life. It's such a good book. Um, and again, we'll link up uh, just some. You can see some of the changes and things for our YouTube channel as well. You can see some of the videos there, and we're going to be adding more um, and some adding some really great videos on our YouTube channel. Just some really good takeaways in real estate investing. So go over and subscribe if you're not on YouTube. It's a lot of good, a lot of fun. We're going to putting a lot of great work into that. So, and thanks everyone for subscribing to the podcast. I'm really excited and thankful that you downloaded today's podcast. Um, we're always, uh, we're always here every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday on Monday. We do, I do a solo episode on Wednesdays. Natalie and I are here together and Thursdays, we've got an expert on the show that we dive deep on a particular subject around passive income. Any final words? I don't have final words. Well, thanks, everyone. We'll see you back here on another episode of Investing in Real Estate. Much love to you all and to you, my lovely wife. Thank you.